those who are joining late, please help them out with the page numbers. Page number is 96 onwards. Facilities, facilities management and safety. So facility management, healthcare, we are talking about the infrastructure of the hospital right now. Okay. The physical structure and the services provide between the raw materials used, furnitures used, everything, procedures in place. They should be in such a way that it should provide a safe, functional, supportive facility for the patients, whoever is within that structure. Okay. Staff, visitors, families, patients, students, <coughs> whoever is within the hospital's premises should feel safe and functional. Okay. So the dis different aspects of facility management services are space management, catering, safety protocols, library database, attendance, scheduling, asset management, maintenance management. Okay. These all are the different aspects of facility management. Apart from the clinical services, we are not talking about the clinical services here. Apart from the clinical services, non-clinical aspects of providing a, 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 a habitat of safety to whoever humans and animals any living beings inside that compound okay in a non clinical way that comes under facility management so the management must strive to reduce and control hazards prevent accidents and injuries and maintain safe conditions these are the three important pillars of a facility management system reduce and control the hazard okay some hazards are inevitable but you can control them from happening you can reduce the risk of them from happening prevent accidents and injuries and maintain the safety conditions for everyone to cohabit okay so effective management includes multidisciplinary planning education monitoring etc as follows The leaders plan the space, equipment, and resources needed to safely and effectively support the clinical services provided. So all the staff are educated on how to reduce risk. Okay, Like the basics like hand washing technique, teaching everyone the correct way of hand washing, the five moments of hand washing, imparting this education. Okay, something as basic as hand washing is also a way of how you are reducing the risk. How to monitor and report situations that pose risk. Okay, reporting all the sentinel events, near miss events. Okay, these all are part of facility management. Use of performance criteria to evaluate important events. Okay, any near miss or sentinel events that have taken place. You can use the performance criteria to identify which areas require more work to do, more, more reporting, reviewing has to be done, okay? So the performance criteria used to evaluate the important systems here are safety, the degree to which the organization's buildings, construction areas, ground, equipment, do not pose any hazard or risk to the patient, staff, or visitors. That is the main theme of the safety aspect. Security, protection of from loss, protection from destruction, any tampering of the resources within the hospital, any unauthorized access or use, specifically when it comes to narcotic drugs, etc. Okay. Unauthorized use, unauthorized access, to certain areas in the hospitals, okay, it has to be controlled. So security comes under that area. Hazardous matter or materials. Handling, storage, and use of any radioactive materials, chemotherapy materials, okay. Uh, control of biomedical waste management, okay. This all comes under hazardous material. Emergency management, risks are identified and in response to epidemics. Disasters and emergency is planned effectively, including evaluation of structural integrity of patients, the patient care environment. Okay. So emergency management is more like disaster management. It's not the emergency services, 
डोंट मिक्स अप विद द एमरजेंसी सर्विसेज केवल एमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट ई आर ऑफ द हॉस्पिटल एमरजेंसी मैनेजमेंट इट्स सिनोनिमस टू डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट ओके फायर सेफ्टी फायर सेफ्टी ऑल्सो कम्स अंडर एन अ टाइप ऑफ एमरजेंसी मैनेजमेंट सो फायर सेफ्टी कंडक्टिंग ऑन गोइंग असेसमेंट ऑफ रिस्क टू एनहांस प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी एंड एक्विपमेंट्स हु ऑल आर द ऑक्यूपेंट्स विद इन द हॉस्पिटल प्रोटेक्ट दैम फ्रॉम फायर एंड ऑल्सो स्मोक ओके मेडिकल इक्विपमेंट इज सिलेक्टेड मेंटेन्ड एंड यूज इन अ मैनर टू रिड्यूस रिस्क द क्वालिटी ऑफ द मेडिकल इक्विपमेंट्स the sterilization disinfection cleaning of medical equipments okay this all come under the safety and protection utility systems electric electricity water supply toilets okay washrooms toilets flooring railings okay uh, seating areas public spaces okay uh, telephone communication all comes under the utility system so this has to be maintained to minimize any risk of operation operating failures okay so these all are the activities different activities areas where organization has to focus specifically to reduce any potential risk or hazards so the main areas where you will require require a structured program or a, a manual per se okay are in these areas first is you will have to put in a safety and security program so all your watchmen security staff okay this department will, will also have a manual of how to do the performance etc how what will be the sops in this department so safety and security program another a specific manual should be there hazardous materials prog program okay uh, independent entities within the hospital like coffee shop stalls pharmacy etc they all will have these different programs regulations okay uh, how like brac will regulate the radioactive uh, equipments okay other hazardous materials comes under biomedical waste management so there there are some certain guidelines put in place and you will have to function accordingly you have to follow these guidelines then emergency management programs that is that is your disaster management program the fire and safety department along with the regional disaster management facilities they will also do mock drills okay specific to your geographical region wherever the hospital is placed not everywhere you will have to do the flood drills okay somewhere you will have to do earthquake prone drills fire safety drills flooding drills okay any any uh, natural calamity based drills based on your geographical region these mock drills will be done fire safety programs to, uh, once in 3 months once in 4 months quarterly half yearly mock drills of fire safety is done in every department of the hospital and induction training is also done regarding fire safety as soon as a new staff is been hired into the hospital and induction training is done regarding fire safety so first coming to the hazardous material program so this program place uh, uh, is in places that include identifying safely controlling hazardous material and waste throughout the facility for example nuclear medicine departments okay they have hazardous material program uh, all the clinical areas where biomedical waste is generated they will also have the biomedical waste management program okay manual will be there they have to follow the policies of uh, biomedical waste management through the manual so according to world health organization these are the following following hazardous materials identified by them okay infectious materials like contaminated with blood body fluids of the patient those are considered as infectious material whichever uh, article or clothing or material any equipment that has touched the patient's body okay is considered potentially infectious 
any pathological or anatomical uh, uh, materials like human tissues, organs, blood products. Pharmaceutical uh, examples are expired drugs, chemotherapy drugs. These are pharmaceutical hazardous material. Chemicals are also lab re uh, reagents, expired disinfectants. Any expired chemicals used within the hospital comes under hazardous material, chemical hazardous material. Heavy metals like battery, lead, mercury, okay? Pressurized containers like autoclaves, which are not functional okay, anymore. Sharps, all needles, glasswares, broken gl glasswares, okay, and scapels, blades, okay, they all come under the shafts. Hazardous materials and waste program will include an inventory of uh, hazardous material and waste. It a list of articles within the hospital that are considered as hazardous and other, other articles which are considered as waste. List of it should be provided. Handling, storage, and use of. One second. Handling, storage, and use of hazardous material. Who will handle it? How to store it? When to use hazardous material? Okay, it will be described properly in a documentation. Proper use of personal protective equipments. When, where, by whom? Procedures, in which all procedures, which kind of personal protective equipments has to be used. It is listed out, everyone who is using, using the personal protective equipments during giving care to patients should be aware of this. Reporting and investing of spills, any kind of spills, blood spill, mercury spill, body fluid spills, okay? Exposure to any uh, potentially infectious or hazardous uh, elements. Other incidents okay, should be reported and it should be investigated why this happened so that you can prevent it in the future. Okay, Proper disposal of hazardous waste. Just follow the biomedical waste management strategies. Uh, that will take care of the proper disposal part. Documentation of permits, licenses. Okay, To run a laboratory, you, have, you need a license. To run a pharmacy, license is required. If you have a boiler room, a license is required. Okay, if you have a radiology equipments, every each and every radiological equipments require specific license to run. Okay, if you have a water treatment facility that requires permit. Okay, so that should be on time. On time, uh, it has to be renewed. All these permits and licenses. Next, coming to the disaster management program. It's on page number 101. Waste management in detail, we will do a separate chapter. So you don't have to worry about that missed part. So disaster management program, community emergencies and disasters may directly involve hospitals. Uh, even at regional level, okay, all the disaster management, government disaster management agencies are, which are, are there, they are also in line with all the healthcare uh, uh, facilities to train them as well, to train the healthcare officials as well on how to do the disaster management. Identify the types of disasters that are likely to occur in the uh, in the hospital's region and its impact on the hospital. Okay, this has to be identified. Determine the imp impact of disaster that involves first you have to identify what are the natural calamities or disasters which the geographical area where the hospital is situated is prone to have okay first identify that or all the regions will have their own reports on this you have to the as as a hospital administrators you will have to follow up with that okay 
the effect or disaster will have on the structure of your hospital okay which area of the hospital will be damaged more if this disaster will take place if flooding takes place okay do you have a parking uh, in the ground floor okay which can take care of the flooding in case it happens or your ground floor itself has emergency services icu and everything and if flooding happens it, it would be much more uh, 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 strenuous for the hospital staff to take care of it okay like that you have to identify if this the so and so disaster takes place how it will affect your hospital's building structure how it will affect the patient care environment do you have somewhere else to uh, transfer transfer your patients okay how the building will respond it it depends on the age of your building is it an old building is it a new building is it is the building built on disaster management guidelines okay so because certain structural integrity if it is followed through while while constructing the building if if these structural integrities are followed you will not have to worry much okay but if it is an old building if your hospital has a pretty old building it's ideal not to keep any critical care facilities critical care departments do not keep in old hospital buildings keep it in relatively new buildings okay which has followed the disaster management criteria while construction okay other opd based uh, opd based or uh, um, any pharmaceutical based laboratory based um, services can be kept in old buildings evacuation plans how many fire exits are there how many uh, emergency exits are there within your hospital okay does your uh, is your staff aware of the evacuation plan okay in case of any fire hazard how will you evacuate the critically ill patients who are completely dependent on the staff? Okay, how will you evacuate them? Is, is your staff trained for it? Identify priority areas. All the high-risk areas are priority areas by default when it comes to disaster management. Okay, ICU, NICU, PICU. When the patient is completely dependent on somebody else, these automatically become the high-risk areas. That These are the priority area. Inpatient ward and all, general ward and all, you can teach the visitors to carry the patient or help the patient move out of the hospital but the patients who are immobilized okay you may have to uh, put them on uh, the beds which already has wheels so you can just wheel them out of the hospital you don't have to take the effort and carry the patient but however in some situations the nurses the caretakers may have to carry the patient out okay so disaster management programs will provide different processes, okay? So the processes will involve determining the type, likelihood, and consequences of hazards, okay? That is regional that and situational, okay? Uh, what? Uh, how often are you seeing floods in your city, in your town? How often did, uh, when was the last time earthquake happened, okay? Is your hospital situated in area which has uh, uh, tectonic plates, okay? Uh, the plates that are keep revolving and that usually, usually when they hit each other they cause earthquakes okay so the uh, and if at all any any calamity happens what are the consequences is your hospital the only hospital in the town do you have the support of other healthcare structures where you can transfer your patients which are much more safer okay so you have to determine all these things Determine the structural integrity of your physical structure of the hospital, their performance, okay? Hospital's role, if somebody, somewhere else a disaster has taken place, okay? Nothing has happened to your hospital structure, but how efficient are you to take care of all the influx of patients that are going to happen? All the people who were affected by a disaster, okay? To take care of them, is your hospital well equipped? Is your staff well equipped? Okay, that's the hospital's role. Determine the communication strategy because telephonic communications uh, may be very static, okay? When a disaster takes place, you may have to depend on radio communication, okay? Because radio, radio lines don't require electrical, electric wires and all, okay? Wired communication, you will, you, will, you will not be able to depend on that. You may have to depend on non-wired communications like radios and all. Managing resources in times of scarcity okay 
when uh, the aids are not reaching you on time okay food aids or medical aids by helicopter or by airplane when it is not reaching you on time you have limited resources and you have critical patients how will you manage it okay how will you triage the patients and according to uh, according to the triage how will you manage the resources okay managing all clinical activities that becomes important because uh, opd uh, procedures may be put on a halt but other critical uh, the hospital may work on full fledged emergency situation okay uh, the outpatient procedures or regular hospital visits may be completely stopped for a few days okay so that's how you have to manage the clinical activities identifying and assigning staff roles and staff duties also staff may have to work full time depending on the uh, type of disaster that has happened and the impact of the disaster that has happened so assign staff roles here um, well, the even the med uh, medical record department staff will also have to help the staff in emergency in collection in collecting the name uh, patient information because the medical staff clinical staff will be completely uh, worked up with clinical related services the non clinical services like collecting the patient information name identifying the patient here the mrd uh, technicians may have to come in and help out in the emergency department just an example so staff will have new roles existing staff will have more roles added on to their uh, job list okay so this is just an example of disaster management Disaster preparedness program is tested by annual test of the full program, like conducting mock drill internally. Nobody else has to come and conduct the mock drill. Your own hospital should take the accountability and conduct regular mock drills within your departments, okay, to identify how well equipped you are in disaster preparedness. Testing critical elements of the program during the year. At least three times these mock drills has to be conducted throughout the year. And if at all you identify any shortcomings during the mock drills, assign staff, assign the task force to train them, okay, train the staffs again. Then you have the fire safety program. And this is for the prevention of prevention, early detection, and also suppression or uh, abatement is uh, like reducing the uh, potential hazards. Okay, even if the fire has started, reduction and removal of the risk. Okay, that is abatement. And the safe exit, ex exit from the facility in response to fire and non-fire emergency, fire safety programs are made. Regularly test its fire and smoke safety program, including devices like the smoke detectors, okay, water sp sprinklers. You have to check them. Smoke detectors, if they're running on batteries, okay, uh, if, uh, if the battery is complete, is finished or not, you have to check, replace the new, replace new batteries in them. Okay, so these tests have to be done. Assessment of the risk include the following areas when it comes to fire safety. Pressure relationships in operating rooms, that is how the HEPA filters are working. The air pressure within the, within the operating room and the air pressure outside the operating room. Okay, how different it is. Okay, so that you have to identify. Fire separations. Fire separations are uh, like passive protection, non-combustible walls. These are the examples of fire separation. In, while constructing a hospital, while constructing departments, these things can be installed, okay? Like non-combustible wall, it's made with a specific material that will not get fi catch fire, okay? So that becomes the fire separation. Smoke separations, it protects the building from the spread of smoke. Again, it's kind of an architectural thing, a construction thing done within the hospital that even if in some part of the hospital there is a fire hazard, definitely smoke will be produced. But the smoke should, uh, the, the, the smoke that is produced should be let out of the department in such a way that no other departments will face the spread of smoke. Okay. 
the smoke suppressions are constructed in such a way that the smoke will escape the department as it is without causing spread of the smoke to other departments and causing breathing difficulties to patients or staff in other departments. All the hazardous aid areas like spaces above the ceiling, okay, uh, linen rooms, trash, trash collection rooms, oxygen storage rooms, these are hazardous areas when it comes to fire safety, has to be regularly checked, assessed, okay, there is no leakage and all, you should assess that. Fire exits, you should have signages, proper big, bold signages. All the staff should be trained to identify the fire exits in, in, in any floor, okay. Kitchen grease production and cooking devices should be cleaned regularly. Okay, it should not, the kitchen article should not accumulate grease over time. Kitchen, floor, wall, stove area should be cleaned regularly so that it does not accumulate grease over time. Laundry and trash chutes should be cleaned. Okay, that also is a, a high risk of fire. Emergency power systems and equipments should be available like generators and all. In case there is a fire emergency, immediately you will have to shut off the electric electricity. Okay, you will have to switch off all the uh, switchboards. Okay, and then when you are moving the patients, you will have to make sure that you have a, another generator system in place because you can't use the electricity which is there, in a, which is, is being supplied by the physical structure of the hospital. Okay, that is too dangerous during a fire hazard. Medical vacuum system components, medical gas, etc. should be kept locked and it should be assessed for any leakage so that it is safe for the patients. So reduction of fire risk can be done through Fire, having a fire safety program in first place, that is somebody responsible, usually your security department, okay, they are also responsible in conducting the fire safety mock drills. You, uh, and some hospitals will have a separate fire safety department as it is. Limiting smoking by the staff and patients to designated non-patient care areas and facilities. Do not allow staff, patients, or even visitors to smoke in the patient care areas because majority of the patient care areas have oxygen facility, oxygen supply, so it's too dangerous. And designated non-patient care areas for smoking should be ventilated to outside wherever uh, smoking area is permitted. Okay, You have to make sure that it's an open area, not a cl closed room. Fire extinguishers, you have to check. It does not cross the expiry date. It should be functional. Fire hose should be available in all suitable locations. Staff should uh, know how to break the glass of the fire hose and use it. Train the staff on using fire extinguisher, fire use, how to use fire hose. So this is the four steps to use a fire extinguisher. First, you have to remove the safety clip you have to pull the safety pin okay and then aim at the base of the fire okay you, uh, you will see which area has the greatest in intensity of heat coming out that is the base of the fire so aiming at the base of the fire and squeeze and in a sweeping motion you have to use the fire extinguisher so that is the fire safety technique Coming to the quality standards for medical equipment. Hospital will establish and implement program for inspecting, testing and maintaining medical equipment and documenting the results because it should not happen that while you're giving care to the patient, in middle of that care, a medical equipment shuts down. Okay, like a code blue is going on. You, you are using a defibrillator and defibrillator is not working. Okay, these things should not happen. So, so you have quality standards which will check that all the medical equipment, specifically critical care medical equipments, uh, are always functional when they are in use in the departments. So documentation will have an inventory of medical equipment that has to be checked on a daily basis. You, you, you can give this documentation to the biotechnology department of your hospital. Okay. 
for the maintenance department of the hospital uh, wherever the biotechnology engineers are posted they will do the test of the medical equipments on a regular basis that if it is working or not regular inspections of the medical equipment has to be done by uh, or not by the housekeeping staff etc it should be done by a properly trained technician testing of medical equipment according to its use and manufacturer's requirement has to be followed up with every medical equipment will have will come with a uh, manufacturer's manual and whoever is a technician operating that medical equipment should be very well aware of the ma uh, manufacturer's manual don't throw it up it has to be kept safely and the technician should be should be having the knowledge where the manual is placed okay performance of preventive maintenance has to be done regularly preventive maintenance should be done more breakdown maintenance uh, rate should be very less inspect and test new equipment before applying it on any patient or before making it in any use of patient care only qualified and trained staff should be appointed to use the equipment under trained staff may damage the equipment further so avoid that monitor the uh, uh, and uh, acting on device notices because uh, usually via email or e even in the notice it's uh, in the device itself sometimes notifications will come uh, uh, some some setting has to be cleared or some you will you will see on screen of certain medical equipments notification will come don't ignore it okay if you are not sure of it call the company and let them send a, 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 a staff who can do the servicing so always no, make note of device notices okay have a list of warranty dates as well and the warranty will get over report the deaths and illnesses related to medical e equipment because it comes at the sentinel sentinel events so today we'll stop the class here